Welcome. I welcome you all to this lecture in the course Samasa in Paninian Grammar. And this is the first course. We begin our lecture with the recitation of the Mangala Charana. Vishvesham Satchidanandam Vandeham Yokhilan Jagat Charikarti, Bharibharti, Sanjariharti, Leelaya. Vishvesham Satchidanandam, Vandeham Yokhilan Jagat, Charikarti, Bharibharti, Sanjariharti, Leelaya. We are studying Tatpurusha Samasa. We have studied the general features of the Tatpurusha Samasa and right now and we also along with the general features studied the sub types of Tatpurusha Samasa. The first amongst them is the Vibhakti Tatpurusha and we have been studying the Vibhakti Tatpurusha for some time now. The main characteristics of the Tatpurusha Samasa can be shown in the form of an equation of this kind, where you have X and Y, the two constituents, they have independent status, they have separate identity, they denote separate meanings, and they are in fact two entities. They are also semantically related and then both X and Y, they undergo the process of compounding as laid down by the grammar of Panini and X, Y as one unit, as an output is generated. This is one unit and that's why both are put in the pair of the square brackets. Amongst them, Y, which is the second member or the Uttarapada of the compound, assumes the headship. Y semantically is the head of this particular unit and so XY as one unit will be related to any other external unit through its head, namely the Y element. Earlier there were two elements and now there is only one element. This is true as far as the meaning is concerned, Artha is concerned, Shabda is concerned and also the Swara is concerned. We said that Vibhakti Tatpurusha is an important kind of Tatpurusha. And we have studied so far the Dvitiya Vibhakti Tatpurusha, also the Trutiya Vibhakti Tatpurusha. The Dvitiya Vibhakti Tatpurusha was stated by some sutras beginning with Dvitiya Shrita Tita Patitagatatya Stap Prapta Pannaihi. The Trutiya Vibhakti Tatpurusha is stated by Trutiya Tatkritarathena Gunavachanena. Then we studied some more sutras which state the Trutiya Tatpurusha, and there are some sutras which state the process of compounding in order to denote an additional meaning which is not denoted by the independent words in the sentence. So compound is generated primarily for the purpose of conveying this additional meaning. And we have seen examples like Kakapeya Nadi 
or vata chedyam tranam as to how the stuti or ninda either of them the praise or the censure either of them is conveyed by the compound that is exclusively the feature of the process of compounding that is over and above the meanings of the constituents of the compound now it is time to study the chaturthi tatpurusha compound chaturthi tatpurusha while we are studying this vibhakti tatpurusha compounds it must be noted here that the fact that the vibhaktis are stated in these sutras dvitiya shrita tit tritiya tatkritarthena and now chaturthi chaturthi tadarthartha and then panchami will come panchami bhayena and then saptami shaundehi and so on the fact that these vibhaktis are stated as input tells us quite a lot about the process of compounding and its base these vibhaktis generally express the karakas amongst other relations sometimes they also express non karaka relations but most of the time they do express the karaka relations so it is quite clear now that the samasa is based on this karaka principle and the karakas denoted by the respective vibhaktis we have already studied that the vibhakti which is part of the samasa gets deleted by supo dhatu pratipadika yoho this deletion though formal cannot erase the semantic effect the semantic effect of the presence of the vibhakti does remain which gets converted into the overall meaning of the compound so vibhakti tat purusha tells us about the base as far as the vibhakti is concerned for the process of compounding as we have been saying it is the padas as part of the sentence and so to speak then the sentence is the input of the process of compounding and a pratipadika a nominal root is the output of the process of compounding this nominal root again becomes an input for the derivation of a sentence having studied all these and many more theoretical aspects let us now proceed to study the chaturthi vibhakti tatpurusha and the sutra that prescribes it there is only one sutra dealing with the chaturthi vibhakti tatpurusha which is very surprising and also very problematic the tatpurusha samasa which is one of the biggest umbrellas biggest baskets in the overall process of compounding is accounted for by some number of sutras amongst them only one sutra deals with the chaturthi vibhakti tatpurusha is little problematic and as we shall see the tradition has to overcome this problem by proposing several different solutions we have studied some of them in the previous lectures but we shall also deal with this aspect in this particular lecture let us now proceed to study this one sutra 2136 which prescribes the chaturthi vibhakti tatpurusha and the sutra is chaturthi tadarthartha balihita sukha rakshitaihi repeat chaturthi tadartha artha bali hita sukha rakshitaihi so this sutra has got two padas the first one is chaturthi and this pada is in the prathama ekavachana 
obviously because it is prathama this is termed as upasarjana following the sutra prathama nirdishtam samasa upasarjanam and because the word chaturthi is termed upasarjana upasarjanam purvam states that the words that end in chaturthi they should occupy the initial position of the compound so this word chaturthi stated in the prathama vibhakti ensures that there is purva nipata of the word in chaturthi which is semantically related with the other word the second word in the sutra is tadarthartha balihita sukha rakshitaihi and the constituents of this big compound are tadartha artha bali hita sukha and rakshita rakshitaihi this is 3 slash 3 tritiya bahu vachana so together with all these words that is the meaning of this big compound words continued in the sutra are sup from 212 subha mantrite parangavat sware sah supa 31 from sah supa 214 of course samarthap padavidhi is present in this entire section so now we have the compound in this particular format where you have this purva pad at the end of which appears the chaturthi vibhakti after a pratipadika and the second pad is such that there are these words and the words expressing these meanings these are the words which are the pratipadika words and of course there is the suffix su which is stated over here so chaturthi and the tadartha artha balihita sukha rakshita these are the pratipadikas and then the output generated is the pratipadika in the first pada and followed by tadartha artha balihita sukha rakshita any one of them as the uttara pada that is the output of the application of this particular sutra now let us see what is the meaning of the different words which are part of the sutra first of all let us see what is tadartha tadartha literally means for that or the purpose of that even though this is the primary meaning the tradition has chosen not to interpret this word in this particular fashion they say that there is another word artha which it follows immediately if the word tadartha also means the same thing there is redundancy as far as the word artha being stated in the same sutra in the very next sequence so this word tadartha must mean something different and the tradition has stated that this means the cause and effect relationship namely the prakriti vikriti bhav so when such a relationship is denoted the chaturthi vibhakti is to be used and we shall see the examples the word artha means purpose the word bali means offering hita means benefit sukha means happiness and rakshita means protected now let us look at the examples first the examples of tadartha the meaning that the speaker wants to communicate is the wood for sacrificial post so a post is to be erected in the sacrifice and this post must be made up of a particular kind of wood so post will be the effect wood will be the cause so there is a cause and effect relationship between the wood and the post now 
we need the post for the sake of this particular sacrificial post. This gets expressed by the following Laukika Vigraha. Yupaya Daru. Daru is the word. Yupa is the sacrificial post. Yupaya Daru. So there is a Prakriti Vikriti Bhava relationship between the meaning of Yupa and Daru. And therefore now these two meanings are interrelated. And therefore they become eligible to be compounded. So now we have this Laukika Vigraha Yupaya Daru and then the Alaukika Vigraha is Yupa plus Nge plus Daru plus Su. Now this becomes a Samasa and this then becomes Pratipadika and Nge and Su they become part of the Pratipadika and so Supodhatu Pratipadika Yoho applies and both Sups are deleted and so you get the final output of the compound process in the form of Yupadaru. This is the compound and this conveys, this denotes the same meaning as Yupaya Daru. What it means is that the post is made up of wood. And similarly, we also have the other example where the meaning to be conveyed is gold for the ring. So the Laukika Vigraha is Kundalaya Hiranyam. Kundala and Hiranya are the two elements where there is cause and effect relationship. Kundala is the ring, Hiranya is gold. Now gold is for the purpose of creating a ring. So the ring is created out of gold. Gold is the material from which the ring is made. Clearly there is cause and effect relationship. And in order to express this, we use Chaturthi. And now, such a Chaturthi gets compounded. So we have Kundala plus Ni plus Hiranya plus Su as the Alaukika Vigraha. Now here the Samasa Saudhnya applies and so also the Pratipadika Saudhnya. So this is a Pratipadika. So Nge and Su both are now the part of the Pratipadika. And so Supodhatu Pratipadika Yoha applies and deletes Nge and Su. So you have Kundala plus 0 plus Hiranya plus 0. And then we join them together and we get the final derived output in the form of Kundala Hiranya, which means the same as Kundalaya Hiranyam. Now there is a cause and effect relation between Kundala and Hiranya as well as Yupa and Daru. The post is made up of wood and the ring is made up of gold. Showing this cause and effect relationship, we add Chaturthi Vivakti and then such a Chaturthi Vivakti gets compounded. That is the meaning of Tadartha stated in this particular sutra Chaturthi Tadarthartha Balihita Sukha Rakshitaihi. Tadartha also means for. For example, A for B. A for B. So B artha A, this is how you will put it. However, according to the tradition, the compounding does not take place in such a meaning condition. And the reasoning is provided, if this was indeed the condition as intended by the Sutrakara, the other words in the Sutra, namely the word artha, would become redundant. So in case of Randhanaya Thali, a plate for serving the food. For example, the compound does not take place. Because even though sthali is for the sake of serving, there is a relationship of for indicated by the word for, but there isn't any cause and effect relationship. And that is the reason why there is no compound. 
the meaning is for and not the cause and effect. This is the meaning of the word Tadartha in the Sutra. Let us proceed further. The next word stated in the Sutra is Artha. Artha means purpose. Now there is a statement in the tradition which says Arthena Nitya Samasaha. There has to be a Nitya Samasa and Visheshya Lingatacha Iti Bhaktavyam. What it means is following should also be stated with the meaning purpose there should be a compound which will be characterized as Nitya Samasa of Asvapada Vigraha type and with the gender of the qualified. So the gender of the compound together with the word Artha would be determined by the gender of the qualified. Now this statement adds new dimensions to the process of compounding. When we say that it is a Nitya Samasa, we assume that the sentential base cannot have the word Artha in it. And this statement also means that the compound would eventually become a qualifier and it will take the same gender as the qualified. The Sutra also assumes that Chaturthi Bhakti is stated by Panini in association with the word Artha. But this is not the case. But now, on account of this particular Sutra, one can say that the grammar does assign the Chaturthi Vibhakti in association with the word Artha. This inference is possible. So now we have the meaning Dvijaya Ayam for the twice pawn. And in this case, we'll have Dvija plus Nge plus Artha plus Su as the Alaukika Vigraha. And then, because there is Samasa Saudhnya, there is also Pratipadika Saudhnya, and so Nge and Su, they are part of the Pratipadika, and hence, Supodhatu Pratipadika Yoho applies, and they both get deleted, and so we have Dvija plus Artha, and then it is Dvija Artha, after applying the Savarna Dirgha Sandhi. This will be the finally derived compound output. Then similarly, we can also have, if the meaning is soup for the twice pawn, we can have the compound dvijarthaha supaha. Here the word super is visheshya, dvijartha is its qualifier and therefore it assumes the gender of super which is masculine and so it there is Vijarthaha. Next, if the meaning is rice gruel for the twice pawn, Vijartha Yavaguhu, that is the expression that we can get. Vijartha Yavaguhu. Similarly, if the meaning intended to be conveyed is milk for the twice pawn, we can say that. It means Dvijartham Payaha. Now, in case of super, because it is masculine, Dvijartha also took the masculine gender. Since Yavagu is feminine, Dvijartha also became feminine. And Payaha is neuter, so Dvijartham is also neuter. So this is what is called as Visheshya Nignata. Then we have the meaning offering for the being, Bhutaya Balihi. Bhuta is the any being, Bali is the offering. So Bhutaya Balihi. Now from this Laukika Vigraha, 
we go to the alaukika vigraha and we have bhuta plus nge plus bali plus su because this is a samasa so this is also a pratipadika and so nge and su are the part of the pratipadika and so supo dhatu pratipadika yoha applies and deletes nge and su and so we get bhuta plus bali and then finally when we join them together we get bhuta bali as the finally derived form of the compound this form conveys the same meaning as the word bhutaya bali so there is the principle of samartha which is closely followed then we have the example beneficial for cows so laukika vigraha in order to express this meaning collected by the speaker is gobhyaha hitam or gobhyo hitam so this laukika vigraha gets converted into the alaukika vigraha in accordance with the desire of the speaker into go plus bhyas plus hita plus su this is the alaukika vigraha and this is where the process of compounding starts so we then delete bhyas and su and we get go plus zero plus hita plus zero and then we join the words together and we get the word form go hit go bhyo hitam go hitam go hit conveys the same meaning as go bhya hitam next we have the meaning happiness for horse ashvaya sukham and this laukika vigraha gets converted into the alaukika form namely ashva plus nge plus sukha plus su and then this becomes a samasa so it becomes a pratipadika and so supo dhatu pratipadika yo applies and deletes nge as well as su so we have ashva plus zero and sukha plus zero and then we bring the two together and we get the form ashva sukha this is the compound output derived from ashvaya sukham and finally we have the meaning protected for cow gave rakshitam this is the laukika vigraha and we process it further and first we get go plus nge plus rakshita plus su then because this is a samasa so this is also a pratipadika and so supo dhatu pratipadika yo applies and deletes both nge and su and so we have go plus zero plus rakshita plus zero and so we get the finally derived output in the form go rakshita this is same as the way rakshitam as far as meaning is concerned so as we stated earlier there is a problem there is only one sutra about the chaturthi vibhakti tatpurusha in the entire grammar of panini now how to account for other compounds of similar semantic structure not explicitly stated by panini as the chaturthi vibhakti tatpurusha samasa how to account for them remains a big problem for example ashva ghasa food for the horse now the solution found out by the tradition is that such compounds are interpreted by the tradition as shashti tatpurusha denoting relation in general ashva sambandhi ghasa the compound is dissolved then as ashvasya ghasaha meaning food related to horse and then because this is a shashti samasa so there is sanction in the grammar of panini and then the relation is in general so then that semantic condition is also restored and the compound is generated to summarize the chaturthi vibhakti tatpurusha is an example of how the grammar is not matching with the usage that grows or varies in the course of time the tradition had to find ways of capturing and explaining the usage that cannot be covered here perhaps 
addition of new statements accounting for such forms can also be a good idea. The compound prescribing sutra also give us a clue about the vibhakti prescribing sutra in general, in several cases. Next we study the Panchami Vibhakti Tat Purusha in the next lecture. But these are the references, these are the traditional sources and I thank you for your patience.